Hello folks, my name is Santosh Rajvaidya. I'm a senior product, product manager here responsible for SDN applications, manageability and orchestration initiatives. And along with I have Daniel De La Rosa, who is going to help me with uh, some of the demo part of this presentation. I want to talk about uh, our SDN application, volumetric traffic management application. <coughs> Before going into this application, I want to talk about some of the issues that we are experiencing uh, today uh, in the network. So some of these challenges are in terms of visibility of, of traffic flows. Uh, to, to understand where my traffic is flowing in the network, what kind of large flows do I have? So one part is visibility and other part is troubleshooting and management of those flows. You know, once I have got visibility into these flows, uh, are there any bad flows? Can I steer those flows in the real time? How do I manage those flows? So this is one of the challenge in, in the large data center environment that uh, customers who, have, who we have spoken to are experiencing. And we are actively looking into uh, addressing this idea of large flow management in data center using innovative SDN approaches. And I wanted to go over some of the examples of uh, what are these specific challenges. Uh, you know, they range from bandwidth scheduling, load balancing, you know, whether my network is efficiently utilized, are my large flows moving through the available part of the network? Uh, I want to troubleshoot some of the flows. Uh, do I have the ability to, to pick and choose the flows and, and replicate those flows to my certain tool ports? Uh, uh, Layer two to layer four attack mitigation. So many times network gets congested because of these security attacks, because of these large security, uh, security attacks. And I want to free up my bandwidth so that these bad flows are not congesting my links. And there is, there is also you know, trusted flow management. I have certain good flows. And in certain cases, I don't want these good flows, these large good flows to, to go through my firewall. I want to bypass. So these are certain examples that we are looking into, we are helping our customers with. And I wanted to introduce the solution, uh, which is Brocade Volumetric Traffic Management Application. I want to talk more about this application, how it works. And it leverages the Brocade Viata controller that, that Lisa and, and to a certain extent Robert has, has talked about uh, recently. So, Volumetric Traffic Management Application, or VTM in short, is an SDN application that, is, that works with Open Daylight Controller as well as our own distribution of ODL, which is Brocade Viata Controller. What it does is basically it inspects the traffic flows as the traffic is flowing through the network. Without disrupting the traffic path, you could get visibility into the traffic, and you could all, also... also uh, perform certain actions on those traffic flows. And I'll talk more about what those actions are. So this application provides policy-based large flow detection. For example, I could look into layer two, layer three, or layer four attributes of these large flows. I could define certain policies. Hey, I want to focus on this VLAN 10, and if the traffic exceeds more than 500 Mbps or one Gbps, I want to meter uh, the traffic which is going to one of my end customers. Or I want to look at this specific flow that is going from a particular source IP to a particular destination IP, and I want to replicate this flow for further troubleshooting purpose onto a different port. So those are the policies that you could define in the application. And, uh, Within these policies, you, you could also define certain actions. For example, you know, hey, drop this flow or replicate this flow to a, another port or redirect. Uh, I don't want this flow to, to be going through, through the firewall. And you could redirect. So those are the policy-based flow detection and management. Uh, as I mentioned, it supports metering, redirection, remark. Remark is a qua section wherein you are changing the priorities of these flows in the real time. So you inspect the flows. If they meet your policy criteria, you could, uh, you, you could apply these actions. In addition, this is a web-based application which provides dashboards, real-time dashboards, you know, as well as reports for visibility into you know, what kind of flows you have in the network and based on your policies, what kind of actions you have, uh, you have applied to these flows in order to manage uh, these large flows within the, within the data center. Any questions so far? Yeah. 
So I want to talk about how this, uh, uh, this application, this solution works. So first of all, you have Brocade data center devices, Brocade network devices in the network. Uh, these devices, for example, are our MLX uh, routing device as well as ICX. Uh, but not what, VDX. It could be VDX in the future as well that I'm going to talk about. So the, the necessary elements, uh, the device attributes that are required to work in this solution is, first of all, uh, these devices should... Uh, uh, these devices should support OpenFlow 1.3, OpenFlow 1.3 with a with a hybrid <coughs> port, a hybrid port that works both as a normal forwarding port as well as an OpenFlow port. And second, these devices should be able to uh, should be cap capable to send SFlow samples. SFlow, as you all uh, already uh, probably know, is uh, is a packet sampling uh, technology that we have implemented in Brocade devices. So these devices should be capable of sending SFlow samples. Then we have a S-Flow collector. Uh, we have Brocade's own S-Flow collector built into this application. So Brocade VTM application has this S-Flow collector and it has you know, APIs as well as user interface to define policies and, and uh, management actions. So once these S-Flow samples are sent to the, the Brocade VTM application, the Brocade VTM uh, analyzes these S-Flow samples for the policies uh, an end user has defined to detect, to gain visibility into the large flows. Uh, it uh, analyzes those samples, and if there is any policy match, if, for example, I have, hey, uh, a 500 Mbps flow coming from a specific source IP, I want to redirect it to another tool uh, for further scrubbing. Uh, or I just want to, I, I know that that's a bad source IP, I just want to drop that flow. So you have defined those policies. So the application uh, application analyzes the S-flow samples based on policy matches. Uh, it it uh, performs the mitigation actions. It performs the mitigation actions through the open daylight controller, either the open source ODL controller or brocade Viata controller, which in turn performs those open flow actions. So Brocade VTM uh, application makes certain REST API calls to ODL, and ODL then, then performs the, o, the, the open flow actions uh, using OpenFlow 1.3 uh, that is implemented on our boxes. So that is how the solution works. Currently, it supports Brocade MLX and ICX. And going forward on our roadmap, we are also going to support our VDX devices. Uh, it works with both Open, open Daylight as well as Brocade Viata controller. That's the high level overview of how solution works uh, uh, i would pause here to to take any questions so this looks like dos mitigation tool well uh, one of the use cases is volumetric attack uh, mitigation as well uh, i would i would not call it ddos mitigation because ddos as you as you know is from layer layer two to layer seven, it's a combination of volumetric attacks okay. as well as application yeah. layer yeah. attacks. And what we are doing is we are doing layer two to layer four flow management. One of the actions available is drop as well. So uh, so this application can, could be used to to mitigate those volumetric attacks. However, it doesn't expand over the entire spectrum of DDoS attacks. Mm -hmm. Well, but this could be used for many other things too, right? I mean, you could use this to, you know, to identify elephant flows and shunt them to a less conjected path. Uh, Absolutely. So elephant flow management is one of the use case wherein you, you get the visibility of the large flow, where, where that large flow is moving through in the network, and then you could redirect that right. large flow onto the available areas of the network. And so this works, this works with essentially any box that does OpenFlow 1.3 and SFlow export, correct? As well as hybrid, uh, hybrid port, which, which okay. does both normal and uh, uh, OpenFlow. Okay. So you're effectively doing regular layer 2, layer 3 forwarding, whatever is configured in the network? then you need to know the network topology if you want to do the elephant flows. That is correct. That is, that is, that is correct. So in the current version of application, uh, we are supporting redirection of flows. Mm -hmm. uh, in the, on our roadmap, uh, we have the elephant flow management use case as well. We are addressing elephant flow management use case, which you could uh, manage uh, in, in two ways. 
One is manual redirection of uh, elephant flows. Mm -hmm. So application detects and lets you know, hey, there is a large flow detected in the network, <coughs> and you have predefined a path that an elephant flow should take once it happens in the network, once it occurs in the network. So that's manual redirection. We are also working on automated redirection, wherein uh, the application using the ODL controller understands the topology, understands the, the bandwidth uh, link state, and then it forwards or, or it forwards <coughs> that flow onto the available links in the network. So that's automated elephant flow management. So Effectively, what you're doing today are ECHOs and PBR through open daylight. In a way, uh, we are uh, addressing those use cases. Yes, yeah. uh, that is correct. I, mean, uh, it's, I can uh, see many ways where this could be useful. I just need to understand what you're doing. Exactly. That is what also, you know, a feedback that we are getting. Hey, you know, you are kind of effectively addressing ECHOs and, and PBRs. So why don't you also make this a policy management application. Mm -hmm. so, so that's another way, uh, you know, we are looking into, uh, not address yet, but definitely, you know, that's, that's uh, one of the way uh, going forward. So uh, let me ask you a different question. I think similarly related. So currently your solution looks fairly reactive to traffic patterns. Is there any way, so uh, policy-based, is there any way to make it more proactive where, where you can schedule certain like events that you know may occur or whatever, and you can schedule pre-programmed <coughs> pre behaviors for those events? Is that something that's... Uh... Yeah, so I would say in terms of proactive and reactive uh, way, uh, what you're doing is you are, you are defining policy. Hey, if certain event occurs, and that, that event as you are uh, defining is that that event could be a 10 GBPS attack uh, on my network, uh, uh, a DDoS attack, uh, I, I would stop, uh, I won't use that term, a volumetric attack, uh, a 10, 10 GBPS NTP reflection attack. And if that occurs in my network, I want to do you know, drop it or, or redirect it. So in a way, this is, this is a bit proactive. Probably what you are saying is, hey, my network uh, is really busy during these particular hours. And, you know, during those hours, I want my, my large flows to be routed over, you know, another, another link, which I have provisioned just for my large flows so that they are not interrupting my mice flows in the network. So probably something like that can be, this application can be extended uh, to, to address that use case as well. Yeah, I'm also thinking of situations to where, say, uh, <clears throat> you had a, it was a retail, you had a regional sales cycle or something, and you, said, and you knew certain traffic that you may have pre-programmed as, as volumetric attack to, to bring that down, to, to, to bring down that traffic, you know, to, or to control that traffic. You want to allow that for a period of time and those kind of <laughs> Thing. And so, um, just, exactly. just the ability to pre-program a, a different set of, of behaviors. Exactly, exactly. So, so in terms of programming, in terms of our policy management, there is definitely scope for more enhancement, like you suggest. Today, it, it already is able to detect both good and bad flows. And these good and bad flows are based on the definition you define in the policy uh, uh, policy section of the application. For example, hey, this is, this is a flow uh, which is, you know, again, what the application does is it, it can, can uh, identify a flow based on layer two, layer three, or layer four attributes. So you could define a source IP or a VLAN and say, hey, I know the traffic coming from the source IP or from this VLAN or from this MAC address uh, is, is good traffic. And as you said, I want to let it pass. Uh, I don't want it to go through my firewall. I just want to let it pass. Uh, and, and that is available today uh, in the application. There could be more fine tuning can be done based on, hey, this is the time of the day, you know, I want to trust X, Y, and Z uh, attributes. And that is, that is what we could you know, further refine. But some of it is already available today. Okay, yeah, it sounds like just fine tuning the policy then is Correct. probably the best way to handle it. Okay. The, exactly. It seems like there's a lot of application for um, service provider and wide area networking with this. You know, if you've got, even for insights, like you were saying, like if you've got like bulk traffic and you know, like a, a slower intranet feed, if you want your backup at night to go over the bulk exactly. track, traffic, you know, you spin up a VPN tunnel, shunt the traffic over that till it's done, and then tear it down. Correct. A data center uh, backup and, and, and recovery. Right. CDNs. Uh, yep. I've spoken to some uh, cloud service providers. Uh, they are interested in the metering action. They want to, you know, make sure that their end customer who have subscribed to certain tiers of services uh, are not exceeding those tiers. 
they want to meter if if a certain customer has 500 mbps of pipe they are exceeding that they want to meter uh, in in real time so so those are certain use cases uh, that that this application could could address okay so some of the feature highlights i think we have pretty much uh, touched upon uh, most of them uh, uh, this is a UI based application and it also has REST API so that if service providers, cloud service providers want to integrate it uh, with, with their homegrown portals, they could easily do so using the REST APIs. Uh, provides custom profile based layer 2, layer 3, layer 4 detection uh, as well as overlay matches. Uh, and these are the supported actions that, that we pretty much went over. Five open flow actions are, are currently supported uh, on, on any of the flows that you uh, detect using uh, the policy. What's overlay matches? So overlay is VXLAN um, is, is, is one of the... But what can you match there? So I believe you could match VXLAN ID uh, to... Uh, I think so too, yeah. Yeah. As I don't, I haven't seen anything in OpenFlow 1.3 that would allow you to match on anything beyond the UDP port number. That's why I'm asking. Okay. So, uh, I think so this is future. <coughs> well, this is future. <coughs> so we are definitely supporting it in the release 1.0, 1.1. Oh. Mm -hmm. We have also gone uh, ahead in our NetIron software and kind of extended certain open flow uh, attributes and this is you know what we have uh, what we have implemented in our net iron is hybrid open flow daniel may be able to you know add more to that uh, however uh, it's it's more than you know above and beyond what what you get through open flow 1.3 mm -hmm. it's implementation of hybrid open flow and these are some of the things that you get with net iron's implementation of open flow thank you okay so with that, uh, I would uh, uh, pass it over to Daniel, who would walk us through a, a demo. Uh, so this is an application uh, which is currently under development. Uh, we are doing a POC proof of concept with some early customers. What you would see is an early drop of this application, and the application will be released uh, in, in April this year, uh, end of April this year. So this is, this is an early demo of uh, the application's ca uh, capabilities. Uh, the resolution is not that good. So as <coughs> excuse me, so as Santun mentioned, this is an early version. This is the dashboard, and we basically have uh, one page with the application, and we'll see more screen captures of how it's going to uh, how the application is going to look at the general availability. But it uses you know the Brocade by Ada controller right here and you know we discovered the topology um, and the application just basically talks on the term that we always keep repeating here uh, like John said the API so but we'll focus on the application here but this is the same controller that I use for all the demos it just happens to be the middleware for all these demos so I'm simulating as we mentioned you know matching on, on layer 4 certain traffic here and I'm basically using Spine for that so let's go over this real quick and um, so we mentioned that it's open flow hybrid so initially when the traffic goes through it's regularly routed forwarded with um, with routing so open flow hybrid allows this to you know the, if there's an open flow flows that match the traffic, we just let it go through, and then you have you know 100 gigs, 75 gigs of attacks going through the network. So the application immediately detects this. It's two, uh, two volumetric attacks, and we'll see here that uh, both of them went beyond the threshold that we set up in the profile. Um, and the moment we detect that this is an actual attack, we go from a possible dotted line to a solid large flow, we then look at, sorry, this is. So what application does is it basically uh, allows you to provide certain observation period. Right. Uh, and you could define observation period, which is default is five seconds. You could define any anywhere up to 30, uh, 60 seconds. And 
once this observation period is met and the flow is still exceeding the threshold, that is when application triggers it as, as, a, as a valid large flow. Exactly. So, so admins could, based on their own comfort level, they could define mm -hmm. an ob observation period uh, before which they would not like to react on that flow. So what I did here, I defined it as 30 seconds. So after 30 seconds, we detect attack. We, we, we send the uh, events here, mentioning that we have detected attack. And immediately, we'll see that the attack is not going through this pattern anymore. We basically have managed to stop the attack. And initial flows is just for topology discovery. But as soon as we get this um, in, the, in the MLX, we'll see that two flows have been created. The first one, uh, very specific to uh, UDP port 123, destination IP.10, and we, uh, the action is to drop the attack. The second one is more general, UDP floating, but the same action to detect, to drop the, 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 the volumetric attack. So that's, you know, it in terms of the demo, but maybe, we, I mean, unless you have any questions on the CLI or on, on the, um, so we can the then look at the actual more details. <laughs> sorry, what? I'm sorry, what was that? I, I wasn't quite sure what that GUI there, was that, was that all, um, was, was that flash-based GUI there? Or? <laughs> <laughs> well, this is, uh, this is HTML5-based UI. So is, there's no Java at all? There's no Java. Oh. There's no Java. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was the question. That was the question. We're starting to learn. It's, it's the simple things. I do have another question. It's the though. simple on your, things. On your, so the command line, what, what were you in on that? I'm sorry. The, you that was the MLX. Guarantee? Yeah, that was the MLX. Yeah, that was just a telling session to our MLX. Okay. Right. Yeah. So he was, he was, however, using Telnet. It was, it was a yeah. telnet? Which, which you should not. It's a demo. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, demo. Right. Yeah. So, so as, uh, as the policy that is defined uh, is, is executed here when the large flow is detected, <laughs> there are certain events that we provide in the dashboard and that we plan to also provide through email notification if subscribed to. So what we see is the, the users are not going to monitor this application by sitting in front, of, uh, in front of it. They are going to define certain policies. Hey, these are my large flow policies and these are kind of the management actions that we want to implement. And once those flows are detected based on the policy, once those management actions are, are implemented, they are going to receive these email notifications, again, if subscribed to, that, hey, you know, certain large flow was experienced, and whether it was dropped, redirect, or metered to certain uh, threshold. So, so that is another feature, uh, so that uh, admins can really deploy this application, and they could just monitor the events rather than monitoring the application itself. Yeah, so let's look at the rest of the, of the screenshots. <coughs> we have the screenshots. Yeah, you have it. Not in this one. Oh, no, no. Yeah. Oh, we don't have it? No. Okay. So then we just move. Yeah. Yeah. So are there any further questions? Uh, and that was, you know, the, the proof of concept. Uh, I was just talking among ourselves that there's, you know, screenshots if you guys need it, where uh, it has more details on how the product will look on GA, oh. how you set up the profiles, the, all that stuff. I would say I would like to see more about this application and the guts of it, so like have more or less what it's actually doing, how it's working, because I think this, this application is a really good example of how powerful the, using an SDN yeah. controller can be, because all you have to do is write an application and do this, right? And, it, exactly. and at the end of the day, that's a, that's a really powerful feature that we may pay a significant amount of money for elsewhere, mm -hmm. and this is just an application. That, that, a, I want to understand the application more, but B, I think this, this application speaks to the, the capability of the, of the solution. Fantastic, fantastic. So we'll be happy. We'll, we'll be very happy to do a deep dive. I also, you know, have some uh, screenshots that you know that are going to be available as features in in the 1.0 release of the application. So I'll be happy to walk over those screenshots with you, uh, but when, and we can definitely do that offline after this. Uh, uh, presentation. So, so I'd say start answering questions now, unless you guys don't want to hear the answers to questions. I have a question. It's not related to that, but um, so I know that you're. You've always been an S-Flow um, 
shop, basically. Can you talk about any integration that you might have with, say, like Enmon or any existing S-Flow collector packages? So Enmon provides uh, a S-Flow collector that's a standalone product. Mm -hmm. I know they are also packaging uh, some of uh, the controller capabilities around the S-Flow collector. However, this is an integrated solution. Oh, okay, this application okay. bundles, it, it provides its own built-in S-Flow collector. You may have said that and I just missed it. I, I was thinking that there was some kind of coupling between another S-Flow collector and I was thinking it was probably no, that. No, there is. But, there but is, if that's a you know, turnkey thing, then that's fine yeah. too. Exactly. Yeah, so number two and number four could be on the same, you know, VM, all of them integrated on, okay. on the so, same server. So can we launch into technical questions then, this we have time? Yeah. Okay, so <clears throat> for the analytics piece, so you, you're, you're taking in all these, these S-Flow samples. What's doing the analysis on what, what would be a threat and what's not a threat? Who's determining that? So your profile has, you know, basically three parameters. The TCP, UDP definition, the throughput, and the observation period. So you basically say, okay, if some traffic comes on this particular port yeah. for this much time at this throughput, so this is, this is, uh, it goes back to, I'm, I'm trying to, this is purely volumetrics. I keep, I keep going back to what Ivan was saying, you know, DDoS and, and more like what's a threat. This is purely volumetric, so yeah. it's fairly simple just looking at traffic volume, okay. Exactly, um, so this is, this is purely volumetric, this is purely layer 2 to layer 4, it doesn't go beyond layer 4. I keep, my, I keep going back, okay, all right. That makes, so it's, it's just a simple, straightforward policy rule set. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Okay, yeah, okay. Seems straightforward, okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Do you have any questions about that? Did you have any, I mean, you said you wanted. Yeah, no, I've got to really. Uh, I've got to think this through. So, I mean, it, it's, it's so simple. I think the key thing is it's so simple, really. It's, it's fairly simple. You just, you're just looking at traffic volumes. You're saying, hey, if you get too much traffic volume, then I can, I can control that one way or another, use some mechanism. And you can do that end to end because it's all a controller and, and it's a big network and you have, you know, pure all visibility and control under this one common controller, which is, you know, today if I had to do this with my current network, I could do this, right? I could look at, you know, this volume of traffic and then I'd have to push out the script, the QoS policy or something to go out. And we've done stuff like this, but um, this, this is just a different, it, 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 this may be simpler, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. in, in some ways. And it may be more straightforward in some ways, but, you know, it's just an example of what, of what you can do. But it's, it just seems it's fairly simple. I, I bet you the, uh, the application is not very big. It's like probably a tiny... It's a, it's, it's, it's a, yeah, I, I would be happy to, Mike, I don't know if you have any more time, I would be happy to, be happy to show you some screenshots and, and it's, yeah. yeah, it provides, you know, a couple of things, you know, dashboards, uh, policy area where, you know, dashboards, you, you have several widgets where you could see, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, and then you have this policy, policy UI, wherein you could define there are some default policies that are available for those large volumetric kind of attacks. You guys have built a UI around all this you've done. It's not just an application that's taking in data and some basic policy, so you've done some work on... Well, the heart of the application... The heart of the application, I would say, is the S-Flow, the real-time S-Flow component, right. uh, which basically analyzes these, these large flows. And of course, then once you have done this S-Flow analysis, you have this, this, this policy implementation of, on top of that, that analysis, right. which kind of based on what analysis is, uh, interprets and, and, and uh, uh, implements the, the management actions. Because as you, um, somebody mentioned already, you know, this could be done today with policy-based routing, ACLs, QS, but this just simplifies it. You know, people have come to us and said, you know, I hate man managing my PBR, managing my ACLs. It's an appliance version. It's an appliance version of doing that. Are, are you able to leverage the, um, the S-Flow data outside of this? Like, can I create, generate reports and things like that for, you know, you know executive summary type stuff that I can export based on that flow data? Because you've got all that data there, right? And you can action on it, but can you reference it for other things as well, like a, like a typical flow collector? Well, currently that that is not implemented. It monitors the devices. It kind of monitors the ports, S-Flow ports, uh, in the real time and receives the data from there. However, in theory, that could be an extension. Uh, we should add that. Well, yeah. We do that in BNA. I mean, we have, we have some of that capability in other products. It just hasn't gone into this one. Okay, you should add it into this one. It would be useful. I think that, too. This is, this is going to be a stupid question. So, um, so your, your repository of applications for, for the controller, is it just like a GitHub, or do you have something more official? I, I'm not sure I, I know. I'm sorry, 
<clears throat> is your repository for controller applications just simply GitHub right now, something like that, or is it? Do you have a more official like partner? Here's our partner page. Here's what the partners have, have sub, you know submitted for applications. No store, yeah. There's no app store. Yeah. So that, that, that was yeah. exactly what I was alluding to earlier. That's that's, that's a work in progress. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Uh, you got on the Sorry. Yeah, no app store right now. That's a work in progress, um, as are the apps themselves. Um, um, so they will be all just in time, and and uh, but but the uh, the GitHub page will be a, a portal to that for sure. Okay. So bookmark that page for sure. <clears throat>